Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and today's video is going to be an honest review of the EC2 3D printer by Kokone. Thanks for joining me for today's video. Before I jump into offering my personal opinions about the EC2, I think it's important to go over some of the specifications and things that make the EC2 unique to today's 3D printer market. The EC2 printer has built and expanded upon a lot of the features of its predecessor, the EC1. In fact, I have an EC1 right here, and in a few minutes, we're going to take a close-up look at the differences between the EC1 and the EC2. But first of all, let's take a look at some of the neat highlights and specifications of the EC2. I think the best way to explain this is going to be to take a look at some of the box art because this box that the machine comes in really does have some neat artwork and it has a lot of great information. By the way, if you'd like to check out even more detail on this 3D printer, I will have a product link in the video description. When we take a look at the front of the box, we're going to see that this EC2 is now available in three different colors. I, of course, have the white example here. It also has this nice burnt or competition orange. And over here, we have a nice lime green color. And those are certainly some pretty fun colors to choose from. When we start digging into some more of the details, again, I'm just gonna reference the box because I think it is a beautiful box and it really does a great job of illustrating some of the key features, many of which are building up and expanding upon the EC1 machine. I'll just run through all these key points, starting up with the upgraded speed. The EC2 now prints at a higher speed of 100 millimeters per second. It does have silent printing of about 40 decibels, which is basically whisper quiet. We just saw that this does come in three different color options. And this is the compact design. I also like to call it, it's fun sized. Moving on to the safe design, the EC2 now has a door. And when the door is open, we're going to see there's going to be a lot more protection around the hot hand to prevent hands from getting burned should they be entering in that area while the print is occurring. This also builds upon the EC1 by using the same model gallery. And let me tell you, there really are thousands of models that are simply point and click and print. Really cool feature is the EC2 does have a built-in camera that you can monitor with your smart device. And speaking of that, there is a smart app control which is controlled through your cell phone. And this is going to be the only way that you connect up to the EC2. So it's a, it's a simplified way and it does make things a bit easier to use. When we take a look at the landing page of the app and compare it to the front of the box art, we're going to see that the two actually really do match. So that is something neat to see that what is advertised the machine delivers. Next, we'll take a look at the EC1 and the EC2. The first thing that really jumps out at me is the basic size between these two machines is virtually identical. When I open up the door on the EC2, we'll see that a lot of the insides look the same. While the internals between the two machines look the same, it's the EC2 that receives an updated and upgraded hot end. This newer hot end does flow the resin or the filament a little bit faster, resulting in faster print times over the EC1. I've moved the hot end so we've got a better view between the two machines. We're going to see on the EC1 that there is a lot of just natural blockage or guarding from accidentally touching the hot end. The EC2 though, having to one up its predecessor, added even more guarding around that hot end. I'll close the door on the EC2 and get this turned around and we'll take a look at the backside of both of these machines. And we're going to see that they are 
virtually identical. And this is a good thing, especially when I start talking about the filament that either the EC1 or the EC2 runs. They are both going to use the same modular filament. This is gonna make it really easy on changing out filaments on virtually either one of these machines. And if you are coming from an EC1 machine and you have quite a library of filament, those filament cartridges are going to work perfectly with the EC2. I'll get these both flipped back around one more time. And since I'm on the topic of the filament, this is special filament just for the EC series. It's specially formulated to work with either hot end of the EC2 or of course its predecessor, meaning that when we jump into the app, we don't have to set any temperatures. Kakoni already knows that we'll be using their branded filament and it's going to work perfectly with their machines. And one of the other great benefits about using the Kakoni brand filament is that this filament is non-toxic. When we're making a print, this filament will not release any toxic fumes during the print process the way other PLA filaments can. This is especially important because the target audience for these machines are children. Now, certainly as an adult, I've used this. It is a fun machine, but the real audience is for kids with adult supervision. Let's take a quick look at the app. Once I download the app, which is free, I do need to connect it up to the machine. For that, I do need to create a free account by typing in a username and then a valid email. Once I have those in and I log into the app, I have access to all of these free models. I can go down to the bottom and discover more. And the app will start loading in all of these 3D models that are compatible with the machine. And I can just scroll through all these different models until I find one that I like. And if I'd like to make something like this little uh, bird shaped whistle, I simply click on it. It will load in some more information for me. It will tell me the printing duration longer. Um, I found when it says longer, we're going to be looking at about three to four hours to print out that object. It also gives me the overall dimensions of that. I can click on start. And what it's doing now is loading that model off of the Kakoni cloud service. And when it's doing that, it's making sure that that 3D model is going to be compatible with the machine. If you're first using the app, you're going to be greeted by all of these nice little helpful uh, callouts for what all of the different functions do. That gives me some more functions off to the side. And it'll even say, uh, I don't wanna see this notification anymore or notify me the next time. And I'm going to notify me the next time in case I make another video on here and I wanted to just review all of the nice callouts that the app has built in. From here, I can scroll around and see the model in full 3D. When this all looks correct, there's really nothing I have to do except hit next one more time. And here we'll see I've got a choice between the EC1 that I've had previously connected to the app or the EC2 and it knows that the EC2 is on and I can confirm the EC2 is what I want to use. From here, it'll give me the option if I want to auto-generate supports to help keep the 3D model planted down to the build platter open the door and we'll take a look. That is the build platter, of course. I can select that on or off. I find most of the time the smart app will make the correct choice for me. Below that, I have the precision can be set to normal, high or low. I like the way this looks and I'll click next. From here, I have the choice of enable time-lapse photography. There is a camera that is built into the EC2. And I can also have a view, print time, and filament usage. I can click on that and we'll get a more accurate uh, estimation of the print time other than it's going to be a long print time. 
And when I click on that, it is going to think about that because it now knows I'm connected up to the EC2 and it's looking at the speed parameters and how fast this printer can build that particular model. It does that calculation on the Kokone Cloud. And here we're going to see that the estimated part build time is going to be two hours, 55 minutes, and it is going to use 9.5% of the filament cartridge. From here, I could hit start printing and it will load the app from the cloud through the app into the machine. And from there, it will start printing. Now with this being a, well, a three hour print, I'm not gonna start this print because I've already made several other prints off of this machine. Here's the very first print I made on the EC2. It is a nice hinged little fun dinosaur. The next thing that I made was this white lotus and this took nearly about four hours to make. I also made this nice spinning top. This took a little under two hours to make. And finally, the last one that I was making was this, uh, it looks like a nice chess piece. And we're gonna see that the top is unfinished. And that is because while I was recording the 3D print of this, we had a big snowstorm come through my area and it knocked out the power. But what I saw from the print so far, and hopefully we'll be able to see it, is in the very center through this doorway, there is an intertwined spiral that runs the entire length of the base, what would have went up to the very top. And then around the outside of that is a spiral staircase. And when I put on my reading glasses so that I could see that stairs, it's just not a smooth slope it actually has steps of the stairs going all the way around. So some pretty surprise detail and accuracy out of this fun mini printer. Having had the EC2 for a while now and doing a variety of fun little prints on it, I have some of my feedback that I'd like to share with you. And initially when I was going to record this immediately after that snowstorm, but I had a few extra days to think about that because I did have power knocked out for about three and a half days. Initially I was going to say, I honestly really don't like the EC2. It has a really small form factor to it. It is relatively slow. Some of these, uh, what look like simple prints, even though there's a lot of detail to them, they take hours and hours to print, where if I use one of my other larger machines, they get these prints done a lot quicker. Now, during that time when the power is out, I had some time to uh, think about my interaction and my use of the EC2, and then that's when I reminded myself as a middle-aged guy, I am not the typical demographic for an EC2. This really is a simplified 3D printer geared towards people who don't want to really dig into any of the technology and creating a 3D print. And it's really geared towards children. And that's where some of the fun colors, if I flip the box around, uh, the fun colors that this is available in. When the EC1 was out on the market, you could have any color you wanted as long as it was just plain white. But the EC2 brings some nice fun colors to the mix. And that's certainly welcomed. I also reminded myself this being more uh, kid friendly and child orientated. And a lot of that shows up when we take a look and we saw the close ups inside. There's a lot of built in safety features uh, with this moving a little bit slower. And there's a lot of protection around that hot end, making sure that small little hands, curious hands, don't accidentally get caught up in that mechanism. And then for me, that started making a lot more sense that when I started thinking as a child's mind and how they interact with it, this actually is a nice fun machine. As an adult, my preference is to use a computer connected up to the 3D printer. I find that, well, the larger screen on a computer is much easier for me to read. I also have a lot more control over the settings of how that 3D print is being made inside the printer. When we turn to the app for the Kokone machines, 
The EC1 and EC2 both run through the app exclusively. So this is both a good and a bad thing. The neat thing about the app is it takes care of all the settings that I normally have to do with a different style of machine where I have to connect with a computer. The Kokoni uh, Cloud takes care of all those settings for me and there is nothing to set. Now the downside to that is every once in a while I do find a model that I download and send to the printer and it's just not sticking very well to the build platter and because Kokoni presets all the settings for me, there's nothing that I can change to try and get a better success rate when 3D printing. However, having said that, I do find uh, a high success rate when I'm making a lot of the prints. One of the questions that you might have is, you've printed a lot of the models from the app, all those models are free, there's no subscription to gain access or print those, but what if you find a 3D model on a third-party website that you'd like to use on the machine? And you can, in fact, download that 3D model. You then go to a computer and then you will log into your account, the same credentials that you used for the app, and that will allow you to upload a third-party model, which you can then access through your app to send it out to the printer. So in fact, if you do find your own or create your own 3D models, you can send those out to the printer and you're not limited to the free models that are inside of the app. Is the Kokone EC2 going to be right for you? Well, ultimately, you are the only one that can answer that question. It all depends on your use of the machine. Personally, as an adult, I find that I would outgrow this machine very quickly. However, what I use this machine for might be very different than what you would use it for. When we start talking about the demographic that this was really designed for, for kids, I think this is a very good machine. It has a minimal upfront investment cost. I think right now the standard price on this machine is 230 US dollars and there's always sales on this machine. And the last time I checked on this just yesterday, there was an additional sale with another $30 off making the price point of this machine coming in at 199 US dollars. And I think on nice quality 3D printers, this is a very attractive price point. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. It's a really great way to help support this channel, help it grow, and it's also a great way to connect content like this with other great viewers just like you. Well, until we meet again in the next video, learn, create, and share.